Everybody talks about these folds as if they're these incredible productivity devices. And yes, in many ways they are, if you use them right. If you wanna be the most productive and unlock the most out of your new phone, you're in the right place. Here is my Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 7 and Here's how I use it. Multitasking is much easier on a big screen. So to set up multiple windows, open up one of the apps that you wanna use. Then if you're using gestures, swipe up to see all the open apps. Tap and hold the icon of the first app that you wanna use and drag it into the space that you want. It'll snap into position. You'll be prompted to select another app to open up alongside it. In the middle of the screen, you can now rearrange the order of the apps that you wanna use. You can make an overlay or favorite a configuration with the star icon. I'll get into that one in a little bit. This bar can be dragged to resize each of the apps if you'd like one smaller or bigger. You can drag on a third party app and then even a fourth app in pop-up mode. So you can use three apps at the same time but four apps if one is floating around. Let's chat about that star. This star will favorite this app arrangement for you so you can access it in a couple of ways. So go ahead, tap the three dots and tap the star. This will allow you to save it as a taskbar, home screen, or on your app's edge panel. The taskbar is the app tray that pops up at the bottom of the screen of the fold. The home screen is just a new app icon that will automatically open up the app arrangement every time that you tap it and the edge panel will make it accessible in the edge panel as a shortcut if you have the edge panel active. I highly recommend using the edge panel for this because it gives you quick access to your work without having to find and open a couple of apps. I use it exclusively for these kind of app arrangements. And if you're wondering which app configurations are gonna be the most useful, here are some of my app multitasking shortcut suggestions. Two different mail clients at the same time so that you can respond and read simultaneously. Right now you can't have two of the exact same mail clients. So that's why I prefer having the access to two different ones. So get Samsung mail, Gmail, Proto mail or something. Your banking app and your email, which is obviously really cool if you're responding to invoices or whatever the case is, you can just copy paste stuff directly from your email into your banking Your browser app. and Google Docs. This is great if you're writing or you're doing research and you need to have Google Docs on the side or your writing software and be able to write and then use your research from your browser. It's great for school. Your email and your folders app or your email and your gallery because there's this really cool thing where you can drag and drop from one to the other, which is really helpful if you're busy like adding attachments to your email or if you wanna add some images from your gallery to an email that you're sending. Your calendar and your email app. This is great for just doing organization. If you're busy at a coffee shop and you are setting up meetings, this is a great way to do that without having to lose focus or swapping between both of those. PowerPoint and Zoom or Google Hangouts. So this is awesome because you can still have your Zoom or your Hangout with you know your Google Meetings or whatever it's called now. You can now talk to the people that are in that room and have access to that PowerPoint slide, which is great. And Bonus here if you are have, you know, sorting out meetings or uh, minutes for a meeting or something. If you've got any other suggestions, please let me know. Drop that in the comment. I'd really like to make the most of my fault. It was a, it's a big investment and you might have a better idea for me. This brings me on to meetings. Virtual meetings with a fault are awesome. Well, as awesome as uh, like being in a meeting can go, right? <laughs> Because Samsung has finally gotten rid of the under display camera, there's a clear image of yourself to work with. No one's looking at a milky version of your face. So when folded like a laptop in flex mode like this, you can see your screen at the exact same time, which is awesome. It's obviously great for seeing other meeting members, but also awesome for using other apps like PowerPoint uh, presentations uh, at the, exactly the same time, or meeting notes, or compiling the Simple ability notes. of you being able to prop it up as well opens up so many useful ways to have a meeting without uh, needing a stand you know, carrying something with you at a coffee shop or on a, a, like in an airport or something. Not a lot of people do this and you should, but you can connect a Bluetooth mouse and keyboard for further productivity. Connecting a mouse automatically gives, a, uh, brings up a mouse cursor no matter what you have on your screen, which is awesome. And your keyboard will share a lot of the same keyboard shortcuts that you're familiar with uh, on your PC. You can prop it up folded like, like, like I said earlier, or you can use a stand if you want to make the most out of that really big screen. I do plan on making an accessory video at some stage. Um, so if you are interested in that, but for now, I'm just gonna link some of the stuff that you see in this video in the video description. So in case you wanna pick these up. And yes, there's 
DEX mode. If you want to really make use of that mouse and keyboard with the right cable or USB-C hub, you can link up your Fold 7 to a monitor in a more fully featured Windows-like experience. It also works wirelessly if you've got the right television or screen that supports uh, Chromecast or Smart View, but wired is by far the best experience, especially with performance. To activate or open up the deck settings, swipe down from the top of your screen, go to Options, Connected Devices, and scroll down to the bottom to see Samsung DeX. Here you can connect wirelessly to a compatible DeX display or set up your phone to act as a touch trackpad if you don't have access to that Bluetooth one. Accessing wireless decks should also be visible in the app button tray at the top of the screen when you swipe down. Plugging the phone into a compatible display will automatically launch decks, which is great if you have a remote office, like if you work from home occasionally, or simply a screen at home in your home office space that you can connect to so you don't need like a full PC necessarily. And a bonus here, if the company that you work for is worried about security or you're worried about security, don't stress. Samsung has their extra secure, you know, secure folder on it uh, that you can access from the top of the screen with chip enabled device encryption. It's called Sam it's called uh, Knox. You might have heard about it. Plus, there's seven years of operating system and security patches on here, which makes sure that the device is running at its latest, most secure version. So that's a long time into the foreseeable future that makes this a very valuable device. A couple of negatives. The battery life is a little bit small. So it's only 4,300 milliamp hours um, compared to, you know, the Ultra, which is running you know, 5,000 milliamp hours. So it is when you are running like a lot on your system, I do recommend plugging it in or getting a dock, which powers it at exactly the same time. Using DEX constantly probably damages that battery. I obviously haven't been able to test it, um, but having your battery constantly plugged in is not necessarily a good thing. There are ways to, to fix that if you want to use um, some of the game bypass mode so you can plug it in and it doesn't charge the battery. Um, but if you want some more information on that, I can, I can help you out with that in another video. Another negative is that it, the compatibility with some apps, so you might not have some of the apps that you use on your device. For instance, if you're running a Mac, you might not have them available on Android or some Windows installs aren't available here. And some of the apps compatibility that you may use with this four by three aspect ratio, as you can see, it's more like square, isn't great. There are ways to force that aspect ratio, but it's not ideal. The good thing here is that because folding phones are becoming more prevalent, we're seeing a lot more of these kinds of apps have support across split screens. So you know, it can vary. And lastly, I'm really disappointed that there's no S Pen support. So I did chat to Samsung a little bit about it. And uh, the answer, and it's a good answer, is that a very small percentage of people actually used an S Pen with the device. So to, in order to make it thinner, they needed to get rid of the layer in the screen that allowed the S Pen to function. That kind of sucks. I wish even on the front there would be some S Pen support at least, so that, you know, for signing documents or whatever the case is. Um, but it was a obviously a consideration that they made and they had to balance that with what users wanted. But for me, somebody who loves to draw, I've got my, my Tab S9 FE. You know, I like having the S Pen on, on my devices, but that might not be you. Hope you enjoyed this video. If there's anything that you think I should have added, let me know. And uh, if there's something that you really appreciated about this, let me know too. Those comments really help and mean a lot to me. I'll see you guys in another video. Cheers.